Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 2 out of 2 games between Gonzo and Abati in round 5 of the second European tournament. Today we are going to be seeing Odon and on the allied side Gonzo has chosen the first SSB and on the Axis side Abati has chosen the Festung Gross Paris. Now this is a, a matchup that I am very much looking forward to because both players I believe are playing divisions that they are very good at. So with Gonzo the first SSB has almost become his new signature since we don't see him play the 116th so much anymore. And then on the side of Amber T we've seen him have success with the Festung Gross Paris in the past. He definitely likes the smoke play uh, with the Pansy Jaegers. We've seen that in another tournament um, previously. So I am looking forward to this one for sure. However, I do feel that it's going to be a hard time for the Festung in Phase A, mainly because the first SSB does have access to the Centaurs, does have access to the Sherman 2s, and both of those can definitely pick apart the fire support units and armor that the Festung has access to in the early game. So on the side of uh, the Festung, they have the B2, that's the highest armor unit I believe they have in phase A. Other than that, it's very reliant on the two star Puma that they only really have one of, um, and that's the highest AP value unit that they have in terms of armor. So that's what Armour T has got to try and work around, and it will definitely be very dependent on range engagements and how that is managed throughout the game. So let's have a look at what's going down on the side of Gonzo here. We've got plenty of infantry, which is to be expected. The first SSB do get the commandos, get the commando assaults, commando supports, all that good stuff. And that's going to be backed up by a Sherman on this SOP side. But I do expect a bunch of this infantry to be heading to the mid, and then we'll have a bunch of them heading to the top side to defend uh, this orchard area and these trees. On the bottom side, it looks to be a relatively light deployment but just going to be taking place his place in this town and maybe try and push into this forest area but with infantry you don't really want to push to the far side of the trees here unless you either control this area or the bottom side of the map because otherwise there's just going to be fire support coming in from here like this is for example a really good place for an IG-18 in that tree line and that can just basically shoot at any infantry that reveals itself on the edge of the tree line um, when you have recon in these hedgerows somewhere. And that's something that uh, generally tends to happen. Over on the side of Amber T, I think he will defend the town quite easily. He does have Beverongs at his disposal alongside the Fel Gendarmerie. So two-star Beverongs uh, sitting in defensive positions in this town should be quite feasible uh, since uh, Beverongs are very difficult to get rid of. Under the fire of the Sherman 2 though, he will have to be careful, so maybe not have them on the edge buildings, but maybe just one behind, so they don't have line of sight to uh, shoot at them, at least the Shermans don't. It may allow the commandos to get into uh, the edge buildings, but we'll have to wait and see. And if they do, well then that will be a problem for Amber T's infantry, since the commando assaults have like 18 HE, whilst the Viverongs uh, do not. They are, I think, nearer to 8 or whatever. Either way, for Amber T on the top side, it's going to be the Puma at the start of the game. He's going to have two lander shoots and heading up there uh, with the Fed Fel Gendarmerie. Further down, we see the IG-18 and a unit of lander shoots and with the Panzer B2. Then we have the IG-18 heading to that exact spot that I was just talking about alongside the lander shoots. In. And then on the bottom side, we have the Pac-40 uh, with another lander shoots. And so no real infantry support for the center which is very interesting i guess maybe he's expecting gonzo to really push hard into this town and if he does then there's no real point in putting commandos or putting um Beverungs against commandos so he's just avoiding that engagement altogether and he's just going to have a lander shoots on the edge of the town that he can then cover with the ig-18s that's a, actually much smarter because uh, yeah these commando assaults 18 he uh, with the 20 he power grenades is not something that uh, Beverongs break through very easily. Either way, a very defensive start from Amber T, which has led to a plus one early on for Gonzo, which is exactly what he wants. 
Um, Gonzo can work around a defensive start from MT very well because he does have the 100 points per minute, which means he can build up very quickly in phase A, allowing him to make strong concentrated pushes across the map which is something that Amberti needs to be very careful of. And since Amberti spread himself out quite a lot, um, it may be a problem. I'm surprised this Puma has actually gone to the top side. Um, there isn't really much room for this to do too much up here uh, because of the choke points that he's going to have to get through in order to make that effective. In my personal opinion, I think it would have been better off for him to come down to the bottom side since one thing that does lack for the first SSB in phase A is AT. They don't have any AT guns. Uh, that rely on obviously the 1000 meter range they have to rely on tank busters and or their Sherman 2s so the Puma on the bottom side would probably have been a better bet because he could have then pushed aggressively with Landers Schutzen and then used it to support his units by the way the Sherman 2 has got line of sight onto the IG and this is a problem for the IG in general um, the Sherman 2s with the 9 front armor can just shrug off the shells from the IG-18 and just continue to hit it from range and if not then they can just drive into the 800 meter range and use the 50 cal as well but either way IG-18s don't last very well in the face of a Sherman that's just the point I'm trying to make the Puma there that has found line of sight onto the Commando 6 squad and honestly Gonzo losing a Commando 6 squad early on would be pretty bad because these Commando 6 squads can be very very effective and generally you want to support them with other infantry squads because that way they don't get targeted so much and you can get a lot more value from them but in this case already down to one man and that is not good news at all for the commando six squad commando supports though in a nice position here to hit the lander shoots in and they're going to be forcing those back and out of the way ig18 has gone down in the meantime lander shoots in going to be forced back and just in general it looks like uh, amity is having a very hard time here not really much he can do. He needs to find a kill onto the Sherman too. Then he can start to control the infantry engagements a lot more. Because without the Sherman 2 there, the B2 and the Puma are actually really decent at killing off infantry at close range. Because they have the machine gun that can do a lot of damage on the Puma. And then the B2 of course has its howitzer with its machine gun. And that is a, a combined HE of 17, which is actually really decent. So it can smash infantry to pieces if the Sherman 2 is not in support. But Gonzo does have a second one that he can bring in and that is on its way. And if those work in combination to destroy the Puma and B2, then things are going to look very, very bad for Amity uh, for the rest of this game. Or at least until Phase B when he can bring in his own uh, decent armor like Panzer Force. So plus one still for Gonzo, going to be counting up to the 225 point mark. E2 now engaging the Sherman. This is a very risky engagement here. I'd like to see Amity try and avoid this best he can and maybe bait the Sherman 2 in into an engagement with the Pack 38. I think that would be uh, much more ideal. One thing that uh, Amity can rely on though is that the line of sight here uh, with this house next to these trees is really slim. So there's no way that this Sherman 2 should be able to engage the B2 unless it's like allowed to creep around and get line of sight on the right side of this building which it has been able to onto the b2 which has just caused an ammo storage hit and that's gonna take away half the ammo from the b2 in the meantime though puma is going to be opening up onto some of this infantry but in comes the wildcat that has already dropped its bombs somewhere i didn't see where that bombing strike occurred but another bombing strike coming in with a second Wildcat, and that is going to hit the Fel Gendarmerie straight in the face, and actually ends up pinning down the Pack 38 as well. Pack 38 is revealed by the Scout, so Gonzo knows he does not have to worry about that. Is actually firing on it with the Sherman 2 itself. He's going to keep it pinned with the Wildcats, and here we go. Gonzo really getting this show on the road with these two Sherman 2s pushing very aggressively now with the support of his infantry. Lander shoots in. They are in trouble in the open. They're going to want to fall back to cover somewhere. But I'm just waiting for the kills onto either the Puma or the B2. That's really what Gonzo needs to find here. And once he does uh, this fire support in terms of the back 38 IG-18s, that's going to really falter because with the recon that Gonzo is using, he is finding those units and taking full advantage. But it's the Panzerstrex time to shine. Does find the internal fragments. 
but he does need to kill that off as soon as possible. Fusilier Marines are right in the face of the Panzer Shrek. Puma does go down, but so does the Sherman too. Nice trade there for Amber T, taking out one of the Shermans for the Puma, but he's just got to find a way to kill the second one since the B2 has also gone down. There isn't really much to support the Pack 38. Best bet for the Pack 38 right now is just to get behind this tree line and get into another ambush position to take on the Sherman 2 in the future. The other reason this wants to be behind the tree line is so that if any, if any infantry come through, it can be supported by this SPW-204 or other infantry that is brought in to reinforce. But, as you can see, Amber T is having a lot of troubles. Lander Schusen just got pushed out of the town. IG-18 is going to try and help out, but that's going to lose line of sight surely. Now the Pack 40 Is that actually probably Pack... Yeah, it is Pack 40 Never mind, it's Pack 38. Uh, is going to be coming in uh, to get into another position but the Fusilier Marines did get on top of the Pack 38 on the top side and have taken that out. This is looking very very bad across the board for Amber T. I am actually surprised that Gonzo is not trying to make too much ground on the bottom side but I guess if you can see the IG-18 here and uh, the Pack 40 there would be no real reason to uh, push across the open with infantry. But you could always just send the Williams MMG to find out what's up. Either way, Sherman 2 is going to continue its engagement, has just used up the remainder of its 50 count ammunition, so no longer has that to fire at enemy infantry. Tank Buster is now being brought up into position though, going to try and remove the SBW-204. Meanwhile on the top side, commando supports are going to be engaging lander shoots in at range, but IG-18 has come in. I should be able to help uh, pin down these infantry squads quite nicely. It's just a matter of whether or not the Sherman 2 comes into line of sight of that IG-18 anytime soon. And if it does, the IG-18 is going to be in trouble. But of course, here comes the Wildcats once again. The good thing about these Wildcats is they do have a really short reload time on their bombs. And those 5 HE power bombs can be very, very effective at just pinning down units enough so that they are not effective anymore. For example, with this IG-18, where he's forced that to fall back, going to do the same with the SBW-204, completely remove the accuracy, and that's something that Gonzo is really trying to take advantage of. But Pack 38 does have shot onto the Sherman 2. Can the Sherman 2 pin down the Pack 38 in time? The beauty of the Sherman 2 is it does have the nine front armor, which is just enough to allow some bounces from the Pack 38. Now the Wildcat's going to come in though with a strafing run and completely skew that engagement in favour of the Sherman. Tank Busters did manage to get into range of the SBW-204, so that's going to be taken out. And the uh, Sherman 2 is now engaging another IG uh, that has come up the road, which ended up next to a Panzer 35, and therefore got pinned because of it. The plus two in favour of Gonzo, he has 61% territory lead and counting, has just taken out the Pack 38 on the road here, the Panzerschreck under pressure. Gonzo really, really knows how to be aggressive with this deck in Phase A, and this game is just showing it. It's very, very impressive. IG-18 going to be going down on the top side, now going to be taking out the second IG-18, I would assume. But for a division that a lot of people deem as quite weak, it's amazing to see Gonzo really show its power. Like in Phase A, the SSB is like one of the best divisions to be aggressive with. In Phase B, they can really struggle. And then in Phase C, they kind of come back because they can rely quite a lot on their Air Force. But just in general, getting the Phase A completely under your control is really something that you need to do with the SSB to be successful with the division and it's something that Gonzo has shown us here so far. Now we've moved into phase B though you can see the income disparity is very different. We've got 55 more points per minute for Amber T and this is really a point in which he can come back into the game if he manages to find the right kills. If he starts to take out the Sherman 2s, then Gonzo will still be relying on the Commando Tank Busters until Phase C. And that is something that can be exploited a lot by armor from Amity. It's just in the early game so far, 
and but he has lost all of his armor to the Sherman 2s, which is exactly what you don't want to do against the SSB. Ideally, you want to avoid engaging the Sherman 2s unless you know you're going to kill them, because then um, you will overwhelm the SSB very easily in the phase B and C um, due to them not having any more armor to bring in and just being able to like take out that armor nice and easy. Like, they do have Sherman 5s, I believe, available in Phase B, if Gonzo has them on the Division, which I believe he does. But currently not having to rely on them, you can see the Stug 3 just being pinned immediately by the Wildcats, which will allow the Sherman 2 to engage uh, the Stug 3 without having to worry too much. The SBW204 has gone down on the right side here, and now we see an 88 coming in. Actually, that's the flat M36. That's going to try and prevent these Wildcats from... Uh, remaining in the sky and continuing to do the damage that they are. D520 going to try and shoot down one of the Wildcats. May be successful in doing so, it certainly is. Now we're going to be trying to focus on the second Wildcat, which can't really hang about due to the FNAC M36. Now IG18 did go down on the top side. ROA are in trouble. Gonzo's now found himself 70% territory with a plus 3, and uh, that is something that is going to be very difficult for Amity to recover from because Gonzo is already near the 1,200 point mark and it says that it's going to be 7 minutes and 14 seconds until victory for Gonzo. Spitfire, or Seafire, sorry, L3. Going to be engaged by this Flak M36. Has to be very careful. There's potential that it's going to get shot down uh, by the Flak M36. D520 will probably just finish that off with its machine guns though and ends up winning two engagements. So really nice air engagement by Amber T, but unfortunately unlikely to be enough to get the job done. Now in the JU-188 here, it's going to be avoiding the bombing strike onto the Sherman 2 because the Stug 3 already has the upper hand, uh, but the Centaur actually is going to end up pinning that and forcing it back, which may allow the Sherman 2 to recover, although it won't be going anywhere since it does have that bailout. But the infantry that was in the way is now being forced back as well due to the arrival of the uh, Commando Fusilier Marines and the Tank Busters. JE-108 going to be trying to uh, bomb this Sherman 2 uh, to stop that from taking out the Flak M36, but just not quick enough. Now a plus 4 in favour of Gonzo, 4 minutes and 35 seconds until a victory. Centaur, all it needs to do is continue pinning down that Stug and it can send something to surrender it. But after 13 minutes and 57 seconds, Abati is going to surrender, and that is game for Gonzo. Exceptional play. Really knows how to take full advantage of the first SSB in Phase A. What it mainly comes down to is just the strong use of the Sherman 2s and making sure that you get your value for money from them. Um, because if you do and you manage to get to Phase B with a strong lead, um, then you can try and make it as difficult as possible for your opponent to come back. And that's basically what happened. So regardless of the income lead or income uh, disparity that Amity had that he could have taken advantage of, he was already so far behind that it almost wasn't enough and it w never really would have been enough. You saw the, uh, the difference in the amount of units on the field. And I'm sure if we jump to the team scores, yeah, it's a 2-1 to one KD for... Gonzo, 1,025 kills to 585 losses. Not quite 2 to 1, but close enough. And a very, very strong performance from Gonzo there is going to win him the game very quickly indeed. In terms of kills, Sherman 2 picking up the Puma, picking up the Panzer 35, killed two IG 18s, exactly the sort of kill list you expect to see. Wildcats, really, really well used um, until, of course, they got shot down by staying over the AA. That was a little bit unnecessary, but. Either way, um, very, very good use of those bombing strikes. Uh, Sherman 2, again, taking out Pack 38 uh, M36. Normal kill list, B2 goes down to the Sherman nice and easy. Whereas, like, the infantry, you know, it picks up a few kills here and there. And it is used was used well to support throughout this game, but it really does come down to the Sherman 2s in Phase A. Because without those Sherman 2s, the SSB would have no way to deal with armor from range and would have to rely solely on the tank busters. So, yeah, make sure you have those Sherman 2s in your SSB. It's very important to control the early game. Nice uh, 
A couple kills with the D520, not often you see these uh, get too many kills, but a C fire and a Wildcat's quite nice. Uh, Pima took out that Commando 6 in the end, um, but nothing else too amazing down here. Stick 3 nearly killed off one of the Sherman 2s, but not quite. And um, this Panzerek killing one of the Sherman 2s was actually really nice, but that was traded for the Puma. Either way, 30 minutes. Nice, decisive game there from Gonzo. Do like to see a good strategy every now and then pulled off well. And that's going to be it. So that is 2 0 for Gonzo versus Ambertie. Congratulations to him. We'll be moving on to the next game soon. But until then, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.